Yeah, no, let's start. <laughs> All right. Um, we just had a little mess up. I didn't hit record. <laughs> or oh, I thought I did, but it mustn't have recorded. So here we are. We have Moritz. Moritz, yeah. Yes, I got it right on the last yes. time I didn't. <laughs> uh, and he's going to answer 10 questions for us. And let's jump into it. All right, let's go. Pineapple on pizza, yay or nay? Yes, for sure. Oh, man, we were just <laughs> talking about this a second ago when we failed that every single person has said yes to pineapple on pizza. And it's, now it's worldwide because Moritz is not from here, as he just said in the last one. Yeah. Um, and we're going to ask, what do you do to pay the bills? I am actually an international student uh, from Germany. I just moved here. I'm a freshman uh, at Bellevue College. So Okay. Yeah. So uh, what are the... How do you feel the cultural differences between where you are from in Germany to here? Okay, yeah, the people here in America are much more friendlier and mm. open-minded. Like, for example, if I walk on the street, somebody gives me a compliment about my style or, like, actually starts a conversation that would never happen in Germany, like in the small town where I'm from. Do you know what's funny? is I find from where I am in Australia, uh -huh. and being Australian, I find everyone here... Like, they're nice, but not, like, as nice as Australians. Like, oh. I can't walk down to the beach and not have a conversation with someone. And everyone's like, how you going? How you going? How you going? How you going? Uh -huh. Everybody's just chatty. And here, like, you walk down and, like, like they won't even, like, look to say hello. And oh. you'll be across the street and you'll kind of, like... And, like, it's different if you're in, a, like, a city part. But if you're, like, uh -huh. across the street in Australia and, uh, like, it's, a, like, a four-lane street, you'll still be looking at each other, like, give yourself a nod and then, like, keep an eye like way friendlier and I think oh. a little bit's COVID like after coming mm -hmm. out of COVID here but yeah. um, so what made you come here from Germany to study um, it's not like America has the best uh, educational system yeah because of that and I also used to live here as an oh. au pair which oh. is like a nanny yeah, a, yeah, yeah, a live in yeah. nanny yeah. so I used to live here um, and I love the culture I love the nature mm. especially here in Pacific Northwest like wow. with all the mountains yeah. and so is it much different from where you're from? Yeah, I'm from a from the East German part um, okay. so it's very like we have lots of castles but not like huge mountains I like houses like, like townhomes they're like castle butted up next to a castle butted up next to a castle um, it's more like yeah on every hill it's kind of like a castle or like a ruin so uh, it's like it's uh, my side of Germany is like has lots of history yeah, and yeah. super interesting yeah. but it's different totally different to the part like to Pacific Northwest for example yeah what are you trying to study here in Bellevue? Uh, I actually have to figure that out. I'm, oh, okay. I enrolled in business, but I just figured that uh, I might want to study, uh, study something else. So okay. I have to figure out my, in my first year now what That's I want it to That feels study. like a crazy thing to go, I'm moving country to study, uh -huh. and now I'm going to change uh, that. That's pretty, like, uh, I don't want to say, like... Uh, courageous is the word I'm looking for to sort of like I'm out here in like I don't know if you're out here by yourself or you're with friends or family or whatever yeah, but totally by myself yeah and then you're like oh now I'm going to change this up I yeah mean, I think I feel like uh, here in America especially here in America it's easier to change your major like mm -hmm. in Germany for example if you enroll in a like a major for example a business major you have to stick with this major or you have to start over and here's like, oh, the first one, like the first year is like to figure out what you want to do, like take a, a general education classes. And yeah. uh, that's, I'm so lucky. Is it to, more expensive yeah. to do schooling here or in Germany? Oh yeah, Germany is totally for free. Like in Germany you could study, I think you have to pay like enrollment from 300 euro in like one quarter, so 600 a year. Um, do you think the schooling is better here or there? I've never been to a German university, oh, okay. but like what I heard from my friends, I think it's harder to study in Germany, like the schools are harder and actually I think it, like here I will study for the next four years and in Germany uh, to do your undergrad is in three years, so mm -hmm. I think it's much more... Uh, Condensed? Uh, yeah. 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 Wow. More so, do you, so obviously you speak German. Yeah. You speak English. Yeah. Uh, when did you learn to speak English? I started, uh, or like, I I think in third or fourth grade. I wow, is that just a German thing to like learn I English? Think, yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's a, 
um, you have to learn it. Yeah, like there's no other way. You yeah. have to learn uh, English in case to do your graduate, like high school graduation. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I can hardly speak English as an Australian, uh -huh. so I don't know if I could put another language. Out do there. you speak any other languages? No, I'm an idiot. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Also, like Australians are very uh, self-deprecative. So, like, I like to make jokes that like. Oh, me, yeah. okay. <laughs> so that's why all the jokes I'm sort of saying, I'm like, uh, okay. So yeah, the I I don't know any Australian that's a uh, uh, just an uh, just one of those Australians I grew up with that speak another language. We're here, really. Oh yeah, and like unless they are from a different culture and uh -huh. they automatically speak that because their family speaks it at home or anything uh -huh. like that. But no, I, there's no one's like, oh, I'm taking this and then. That's can speak it fluently outside of school. You know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. oh, I can do it in school, do it in school, and then they forget about it because they don't use it outside of school. Oh. Where here, like, my wife speaks a bit of Spanish. Other people I know are fluent in it. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, man, I wish I was fluent in Spanish. Like, that would be sick. But did they offer some programs at school? Or when I was in high school, they offered, like, programs, and I feel like you could go on a bit from them. But mm -hmm. it wasn't a mandatory thing. Ah, okay. And then, like, what language do you choose? Where... If you're speaking English, then, the, like, um, I remember there was either German, French, or Japanese mm -hmm. that you could learn. Oh. And Germany was meant to be the, like, business language. Like, you learn that so you can go do business in the... Oh. And then French. French was so then you could, like, mouth movement. Uh -huh. Uh, uh -huh. And then Japanese was... Um, I don't even know why that one was. But it was just sort of, like... Uh, oh, I think it was the writing. Ah, so yeah, then yeah. you could, like, see those other writing and stuff. But, it, like... Then you could pursue it if you were into the, any of those. Ah, I see. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. It is, right? Different place in the world. Yeah, um, totally. All right. Is there a song that makes you want to dance? A song? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it recently came out uh, from Miley Cyrus. Uh, oh, called Flowers? Flowers. Flowers. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> like, I was obsessed with this song. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, like, while I was uh, doing my laundry, I was dancing or, like, yeah. in the car, like, for every every single I, I don't vibe with that song that much but I can see why people would yeah, yeah like I could yeah. be like alright alright like <laughs> it's not my my taste but I'm like yeah get it yeah get it <laughs> uh, what do you do for fun outside of studying and uh, dancing to flowers uh, I actually enjoy being like uh, I'm a very outdoorsy person I yep. enjoy being outside playing volleyball or going hikes oh have you picked up pickleball yet P no what is that oh my gosh I'm about to change your life like you okay. gotta remember this moment tell me <laughs> so pickleball is a cross between table tennis and tennis, uh -huh. but it's on a smaller version of a modified tennis court, uh -huh. and you have a pickleball, which is like one of those wiffle balls, Yeah, and then you've got these paddles, and they started out as old, like wooden paddles, and you would hit them across the net, and it can bounce, but the ball doesn't go as fast, but you can like sort of play it, like I play it a lot, uh -huh. and there's like a bunch of ex-tennis players that play it, there's but like... And you play it in... The best part is it's like mainly pickup games. So mm -hmm. where we are... Do you know where Everest Park is? Everest Park? Yeah. So there's a, a park just over here in the back of Kirkland called okay. Everest mm -hmm. Park. And there's a three pickleball courts there. Oh. And basically you can go in there and put like a paddleball, pickleball paddle down uh -huh. and just jump in the rotation and learn about it. Oh, the, that's cool. Yeah. You should look it up. Yeah, definitely. It yeah. sounds super fun. Yeah. And it's super social. Like, so like... You're meeting new people all the time. You're like playing, uh -huh. and like, and then like people sort of splinter off into their own groups. And oh, we're going to go over this pickleball place and play here, or we're meeting up down here. And like, it's pretty, pretty wow. amazing. Yeah, I, yeah. I will definitely check it out. Yeah. Um, oh, sorry. And then I cut you off. So you do um, uh, volleyball and other stuff outside. Oh yeah, I just enjoy being outside, going on walks, and do you uh, get up and go hiking in the mountains and stuff? Yes, I do. I not not with this weather. I, I mean, I do some snow hikes. Yeah. Uh, I I did some snow hikes this winter, but uh, I'm mostly enjoying hikes when it's like spring, summer, yeah, yeah, fall. Yeah, yeah, it's wet enough as it is. Like walking through those places, and you're like, yeah, like <laughs> yeah. a wet tree branch goes across your face, and you're like, ah, oh, god. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel you on that. What is your favorite animal? Definitely a dog. A dog. a dog out of yeah. all the animals in the world yeah a dog i mean i in germany i grew up on a farm and like there were lots of animals um we uh, we had yeah like, but there's no rhinoceros there huh there's no rhinoceros there's no <laughs> giraffe with a freaking 10 foot neck 
<laughs> tr tr true. But I like since I can think, I had a dog around me, so it's it's kind of like yeah. dog oh, is like the closest. My dog, one of my best mates. Like I like talk to it. Like I'll be drawing, and I'll be like, "What do you think of this line?" While I'm drawing, the dog doesn't care. But yeah. I'm like treating it like it's a person. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. What's your what breed of dog would you? Choose? Um, I would say a Great Dane. A Great Dane. Mm, yeah. I, I I'm more the kind of dog person who likes uh, taller, like bigger dogs. Bigger dog, yeah. Um, like yeah. they're more kind more nice more mm. nicer yeah they don't bark as often as like little dogs i have a a english staffy do you know what they are the staffordshire bull terrier uh, yeah no yeah. a terrier mm -hmm. yeah staffordshire bull terrier they're so, really smart right uh well this one it is smart but uh <laughs> these i don't know if we're talking about the same dog like there's uh, different types of terriers uh -huh. this one's okay. like one of those sort of like bit musclier terriers oh, like okay. people think it's a pit bull but it's not but anyway oh. okay. um I have one of those, so it doesn't bark very much, but it's a bit of a smaller dog. Uh -huh. But I used to have a little white, fluffy um, Bichon Maltese. Uh -huh. It rarely barked, but it was, out of all the dogs I've had in my life, yeah. that one there might be the best, because it's just easy going. Like, I could be right here and be like, just stay there. And it'll just yeah. be like, all right. I'd be like, all right, now we're going on an eight-mile hike. Be like, okay, let's do it. And then like, just oh. make it a lot. Yeah, it was the best dog. It was the best all-round dog ever. Yeah, yeah, that's. I think that's the one part about bigger dogs. I think they need to like get exercise. So well, Great Danes, yeah, I think they need a bit of exercise, yeah. but they've got a short yeah. lifespan, right? Because they're so big. Yeah, I think the the uh, the taller the dog, the uh, shorter is their life. life, right? Yeah, yeah, probably like humans as well. Like the short people probably live for longer. I don't know. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> um, which story or personality trait of yours do you wish people automatically knew? when they first met you, without you having to tell them? Mm, I would say my... Um, I would say my kindness. Like, yeah. people... Uh, people, like, my all my friends know that I'm very, like, a very social, kind person. Mm -hmm. So, uh, probably, yeah. Yeah, that? Okay. Do they? Do you ever think because of, like Germany, known for being like, uh, like strict and very. Uh, yeah. Do you worried people think like, oh, he's German, then they're gonna, uh, think I'm very harsh, like not harsh and like. But yeah, yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, I think people like always stereotype Germans, yeah. and uh, I'm definitely not the most typical German. Yeah. So. Um, I would say I'm not the most typical Australian either. Like people like. I also think people stereotype Australians like with like a country bumpkin, but then I also was a bit of like I grew up in the bush catching lizards and snakes and all oh. that sort of stuff. Okay. So everyone thinks that, and I'm like, well, I'm not like that, and I'm like, well, you kind of were. So <laughs> I'm a bit of both, but yeah. But, but Australians, like, I get where you're coming from, but I get the um, the opposite side of that where everyone's like loves the Australian accent, like mm -hmm. throw a shrimp on the barbie, like. Crocodile Dundee, here's a knife. Like, that's not a knife, this is a knife. Uh -huh. And so I have to deal with all those sort of jokes and stuff yeah. all the time. Not that I care. That doesn't really bother yeah. me. I like the attention most of the time. Yeah. I mean, so many people say Germans only eat a sauerkraut and bratwurst. So. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Have you never heard of it? No. Like, uh, I, I oh, bratwurst, so did you say? Bratwurst, yeah. Oh, yeah like yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the sausage. sausage. Yeah. And every time like I say, oh, I'm from Germany, they're like, oh, do, 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 do you eat only uh, sauerkraut and bratwurst? Yeah. And I'm like, ah, no. I, I actually don't get, like that. I always get like, have you eaten kangaroo? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I have. <laughs> like, but, and they're like, oh, man, you're crazy. And I'm like, well, it was good. Yeah. Right, but yeah, I get you. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you were to take me out to your favorite food place, where would you go? Best Bratwurst place? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I would actually... You mean here in Seattle or... Wherever. I don't care. Wherever? Wherever. We've got a magic bus and they can take us anywhere. Uh, then I would say... Um, there's a there's a taco place. I, I used to live as an au pair in San Francisco in the Bay oh. Area. And there's a really good Mexican uh, taco restaurant um, uh, close to Mission Dolores Park. Yep. I um, yeah, I would probably go there. Yeah, I, I think... Well, I'm sure there's a few of them. There, I was just down in San Francisco and then someone was telling me about a place... This place in the Mission District that um, is a great Mexican place that you got to go to. So, wonderful, the same place. I, I don't, I don't know the name of it. I could 
totally show you on a map, but yeah. uh, I don't know the name of the... Maybe mm. it's the same. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe we got that bond, but it's the same. Let's hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if, uh, what is something that you have overcome that has made you proud? Um, I came out... Uh, like, I stepped out of my comfort zone and moved 5,000 miles away from my family. That was, like... I kind of wanted to leave and see the world, but it's also kind of scary to oh, do it yeah. all by yourself. Yeah. So I overcome my fear of traveling alone. So um, is this when you're becoming an au pair? Yes. Okay. I actually, like, I flew once before I came here. As in, like, before I, before I uh, moved here, uh, I flew once uh, for two hours, and then I, uh, like, my next flight was to the United States. A wow. straight ten hour, ten and a half hours. So well, I was kind of scared of flights and yeah. um, being by myself. Yeah. So how did, when did you feel like you would overcome that? Like once you'd settled in at the place that you're working, like what was that journey like for you? Um, the, the first, uh, my, my first two and a half weeks were like very, uh, I was talking with my hands and feet and Google Translator because my <laughs> English was not the best at that point. Um, and soon, like, Every day I was learning new vocabulary and new words and... Oh. Um, and words in context, like yeah. having it like here versus even just Australia, like both English speaking places, mm -hmm. even the way we say uh, takeaway and here they say to go mm -hmm. and I'd be like takeaway and they'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> or even saying like we say, how you going? And, yeah. it, uh, and they, what do they say here? How, no, we say, how's it going? And we say, how's it going? And they say, how you going? I don't know. How One of the doing? two. Now I'm. Now I don't know which way. But I remember when it first happened. <laughs> yeah. People be like, "I'm going that way," and I'd be like, "Huh? Like, <laughs> what? What are you talking about?" It was just like one of these, like small little differences. So I can't imagine from your perspective of like knowing English, thinking like, "Oh, that my English is decent, right?" And then you get yeah. here and you're like, "Oh shit!" Now I'm in a whole fucking another yeah lake. Yeah, and as soon as I like I got comfortable and like having conversation with others like mm -hmm. was I when I used to uh, like just talk to my host family that was fine because there was no pressure but as soon as I go out in a restaurant and have to mm. order something oh, yeah. and as soon as I felt comfortable doing that I felt like okay now I stepped out of my comfort like now I arrived and now I feel comfortable yeah, yeah. living abroad uh, yeah. yeah I remember even when I'd go order different food at restaurants and they'd be slightly different so even a drink. So I would say lemonade in Australia, which would be a Sprite. Mm -hmm. Here, when I'd say lemonade, they'd literally bring out a, a lemonade. lemonade. And I'd be yeah. like, what, <laughs> what is this? Like, I asked, and they'd be like, there'd be a confusion. I'd be like, oh, sorry, mate. Australian. And then they'd be like, oh, ho, 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 throw a shrimp on the barbie. And then they'd oh be like, gosh. yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's all good. But it's like just these people don't realize the subtle differences. A couple of uh, days ago, I had someone else on here. And they were from... Uh, What's it? Romania, and uh -huh. his dad didn't speak English, and now his dad's a doctor here. And I was like, I can't imagine how much your dad had to go through to learn the language, learn the cultural differences, and then adding on all that knowledge. Yeah, like, his brain must just be in a full-on sponge, just soaking and retaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's nuts. Um, what are three things that you are grateful for? Um, I am grateful for my health. Yeah. Um, I think that's the most important thing I'm grateful for. Then for my family and friends, mm -hmm. and um, I'm, that this, those were three, right? Well, you can family and friends. Family you can, friends, bundle, you okay. can bundle them together. Okay, good. Uh, and I'm grateful for um, the opportunities I get uh, in life. Um, mm. Like, all right, I got two questions on this, uh -huh. right? So when you say you're grateful for your opportunities in life, mm -hmm. um, do you believe that you are making these opportunities or these opportunities are coming to you? How do you, how do you perceive that? Um, I think like my generation has, for, for, like I think my generation has so much more opportunities. Exam mm -hmm. Like for example, my parents, they wouldn't have the opportunity to live abroad or like mm -hmm. th when they grew up in East Germany, like the Russian side, they couldn't ha like, didn't have the opportunity to like go somewhere and study somewhere else other mm -hmm. than Germany. And I feel like 
we ha like my generation has much more opportunities and like it's easier to um, have other uh, options. Yes. So on that though, there's got to be people that grew up in your small town mm -hmm. that's your age and you've gone, I'm going to take this opportunity to go be in a pair and then go study. And there's people back there probably going, I can't do that. Yeah. Right. So the question is, is how do you approach opportunity? Are you someone that says, hey, here's opportunity and um, it comes to me or I go out and I say yes to these opportunities. So I'll give you a small example that mm -hmm. I think that um, when people say they manifest something, I believe that they sort of, it's all these micro yeses that they say to it. So me, let's say I'm manifesting this podcast to be massive, right? Mm -hmm. If I was sitting home my ass and I was just manifesting, manifesting and nothing's happening, right? The likelihood of someone busting through my door and going, you're getting a podcast and we're going to make it, make it huge, right? Mm -hmm. Not going to happen. But yeah. if I was like, okay, I manifest it and then I was like, a, an ad pops up and says, hey, learn how to do a podcast. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to say yes to watching that. And all these little mini yeses that lead on to like, you know what? I'm going to buy the equipment. I'm going to put this into action. Like I was so nervous about coming and asking to do this, even mm -hmm. though it seemed so minuscule. Yeah. But it took me like a week to like sort of almost build the courage up to do it. Mm -hmm. So my question is, how like, where do you say fall in line, like on that? I think the oppor like I am reaching out to opportunities. Like yeah. I am go like for example, I think the like the au pair, like for example the au pair yeah. uh, uh, whole experience. Uh, I had like some other. Uh, students in my high school uh, they uh, they um, um, showed me a PowerPoint about like yeah. studying abroad and I was like interested in that and then I got more information about uh, the whole process and but I was actually the person who like searched and wanted this opportunity to be uh, to happen so so you took it like basically there was a, a question posed to you or, or information and you took a yes on that yes. and then you took more yeses yes. and then you took provided yourself with opportunity to get to the yeah. end goal so yeah yeah that's so i'm kind of in between like yeah yeah opportunities come but i also put effort into yeah this yeah opportunity i don't think that any i always like the saying luck favors the prepared mm -hmm. and so i think that whenever you put something forward then you're like all right then if I've done the work for it, then something's going to come to fruition, you know? Yeah. So, I like that. And I also think, uh, think that everything happens for a reason. Like, if it's meant to be, it will be. Oh. So. We might be on different pages for that. <gasps> oh, really? What do you think? Well, I, when, if everything happens for a reason, mm -hmm. I feel bad for all the people that are innocent that have terrible That's things true. happen to them. That's true. And so, I know so many people that have just had terrible things happen to them and it's nowhere near their fault and so when i say that right. and even if, like i don't believe in god i'm an, like mm -hmm. what people would say an atheist but i like i don't care for that term either okay but, <laughs> uh but i'm just like it just doesn't make sense to me like that mm -hmm. like if everything happens for a reason then why try it all do you get what i mean because if yeah yeah I, I totally get it but for me it's like uh i don't know what the bigger message of this uh like this, uh, what what happened to you? I don't know what the bigger message is about it. You know. Um, oh yeah. Um, if it's if it happens for uh, I don't know for a bigger sense. Oh, see, I think it doesn't. It doesn't. So I one of the things I do to psych myself up. Uh -huh. I think of um, two things. I think of dinosaurs. It sounds really odd, and I think of space. So okay. when I think of dinosaurs. They lived on this earth for millions and millions and millions of years, right? Mm -hmm. Like, they're the longest surviving species on this planet ever. Mm -hmm. Or, like, type of thing. I don't know if you'd say species. But anyway, like, um, and we, even our whole piece of living, what, 40,000 years? Like, I think the Native Australians are the longest living and they're 40,000 years. Mm -hmm. That means that dinosaurs live so long. We're so minuscule, even in their time... We're like a little dot on this. And then sure. when I look into space and I'm like, hang on. We are one of eight planets around this sun. 
and then we are in a galaxy, and then that galaxy's in uh, this space that's got billions of others. Yeah. Like we're so minuscule. So then I'm like, well, like I don't, I don't. Nothing matters. Like, not to say that I should go out and do anything bad. I want to make sure that, like we're all making it through this as nothing matters together. Yeah. And so to me, I'm like, well, they're, they're, we can all do good and make this better and have a good time, all while being good to each other. Yeah. It, but not to take away from your beliefs yeah. at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I get, I definitely get your point. Yeah. Yeah. But the other thing is, I wanted to ask is, you said friends and family. What's it been like making friends here? It's so much easier. Like uh, I think uh, here. In Germany, it's more like you have to have something in common to make friends. And here, it's also like if you, like, difference put you together. Like, mm -hmm. um, here, you just go on a street and meet, uh, meet other people, like, talk to somebody, like, to a stranger. Mm. And you see, oh, I like that, or do you like that, blah, blah, blah. And then you uh, make friends. Like, it's so much easier to make friends here. Have you made close friends here? I do, yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. How long but have you been here for? Uh, I used to live here as an au pair for one and a half years and now I'm here as a international student since eight months. So okay. almost two years in okay. the United yeah, States. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like uh, when you it's almost like living in different countries. Like San Francisco feels so much further away than Yes. Like it's not like you're zipping down there every weekend to catch up with friends, you know? Yeah. Um but I also made like uh I made a lots of international friends. Like oh, wow. Now, okay. Yeah, like, I think America is much more international than Germany, like, the part of Germany where I'm from. Mm. So it's also um, super easy to make friends international. Yeah. I feel that it's almost like if you know someone's international, like, the, um, if I know there's an Australian somewhere, I feel like, okay, but there's this, like, energy of, like, a... Uh, it, we might not even hang out, but we have, like, the same sort of humor or the same this and... Even other people that are international, I'm like, okay, we, we kind of know uh, like, or view this country from a different thing. So we have that little bit to bond on, even if we've got nothing else in common. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, if they're like, I love soccer, and I'm like, I can't stand soccer, but hey, we can like, <laughs> chat about this, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. Yeah. I think uh, as soon as you live abroad somewhere else, you have that in common. Yeah. Because like, yeah. you, all, you all took the step to move somewhere else. Yeah, you know? I fully agree. All right, last question. Mm -hmm. If you had to wear a shirt for a year and it had to have a slogan on it, but you can't, you can, can't take the shirt. Well, you can take the shirt off, but you have to wear it no matter what. Mm -hmm. What does it? What does the slogan say? Oh, interesting. Uh, let me think about it. Um, uh, I think the slogan would be "No matter where." No matter where. Can uh -huh. you explain on that? Um, no matter where I am, uh, like, no matter where, like, the home where, I'm, where I am, it's me. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't uh, depend on the location. Yeah. Um, so... Have you heard the saying, um, home is where you rest your heart, uh, heart, or is it... And then there's another saying, home is where you rest your hat? Like, it doesn't uh, matter where you are. Yes. Yeah, where you, uh, yeah, I heard it, but... Yeah, yeah so that's... Kind of the message. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Moritz. Cool. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Moritz. Yeah. Yes. In Germany, in Germany, actually would say Moritz. Okay, I'll try it. Already. Okay. Moritz. Yeah. Close. Pretty close. Yeah. Close. I feel like you're more in the back of the throat, and I was rolling yeah, my arm. Uh, like Germans do the. Okay. Moritz. 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 Yeah. Moritz. God, I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like I'm messing your name up. <laughs> no, 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 that's totally fine. Well, thank you very much. And thank you. Uh, nice I'll get a, you. Oh, thank you. Oh, lovely to meet you. But I'll yeah. uh, get a drawing done and then I'll email you and then oh put gosh. this all up and then you get the. Yeah. That's so it. fun. Yeah. Cool. Thank, thank you very you. much. Okay. <laughs>